Imagine waking up to the news of a nuclear standoff brewing overnight. It's unsettling, isn't it? This video dives into the grim reality some U.S. cities face in the event of a nuclear strike. With rising nuclear threats, knowing potential targets is now more important than ever. To fully grasp the current nuclear landscape, it's essential to reflect on the historical context, particularly the tumultuous Cold War era. Emerging from the ashes of World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union embarked on a geopolitical rivalry that defined global dynamics for decades. At the heart of this rivalry lay nuclear arsenals capable of unparalleled destruction, setting the stage for a tense standoff where the slightest miscalculation could precipitate cataclysmic consequences. The Cold War was characterized by a doctrine known as Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD, a chilling concept where both superpowers understood that any nuclear strike would result in devastating retaliation. This principle underpinned a fragile equilibrium where neither side dared to escalate beyond a certain point for fear of triggering global annihilation. This period was punctuated by moments of extreme tension, such as the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, when the world watched nervously as the two powers confronted each other directly over the placement of Soviet missiles in Cuba. However, the nuclear landscape has evolved significantly since the Cold War's heyday. The 21st century introduces a more complex scenario, with additional nuclear-armed states like China, India, and Pakistan. Each of these countries maintains its own nuclear doctrines, often tailored to regional dynamics and their strategic interests. This diversification has expanded the traditional bipolar framework of deterrence into a multifaceted global chessboard, where the movements of nuclear powers are influenced not only by global politics, but also by regional conflicts and the persistent specter of nuclear terrorism. Today, the challenge extends beyond the sheer number of nuclear warheads. It encompasses issues of cybersecurity, proliferation risks, and the potential for non-state actors to acquire or employ nuclear materials. These factors inject a new level of unpredictability into international relations, demanding a nuanced understanding from policymakers and global citizens alike. My grandfather lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis. He vividly remembers the constant anxiety, the drills at school, the fear of the unknown. That fear shouldn't define our generation. But by understanding today's threats, we can be better prepared and advocate for a more peaceful future. Now that we have the background explained, let's dive into the nitty gritty. Imagine a chessboard, but instead of pieces, we have military installations. These are the areas Russia might potentially target, starting with strategic military targets. Several U.S. bases stand out because of their crucial roles in national defense. Think advanced capabilities and strategic importance. Let's take a closer look at some key installations that could be on the target list. First up, we have Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. This base is a pioneer in using renewable energy, with a whopping 72,000 solar panels. But beyond green initiatives, Nellis plays a vital role in Air Force training and operations. Think of it as an advanced training ground for pilots and crews, simulating real-world aerial combat scenarios. Then we have Fort Hood in Texas. This massive base is known as a premier training ground for the heavy hitters of the U.S. Army, including armored divisions. Its sheer size and advanced facilities make it a powerhouse in terms of military preparedness and logistics. Ever seen a movie where a military command center is hidden deep inside a mountain? That's basically Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station in Colorado. Built within a mountain and fortified with granite-reinforced blast doors, this facility is designed to withstand anything thrown at it. Think of it as the ultimate secure location for military command and control operations. Moving from mountains to research labs, we have Fort Detrick in Maryland. This base is home to the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, or USAMRIID. Remember those scary movies with pandemics? Well, USA MRIID is one of the front lines of biomedical research and development, working to protect us against biological threats. Now let's talk about the Navy's elite, the Navy SEALs. Naval Base Coronado in California is crucial for their training, including demolition and BUDS, or Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL training. These are the guys who take on the toughest underwater missions. If you need troops ready to deploy quickly, Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington is your one-stop shop. Serving both the Army and Air Force, this base boasts advanced training facilities and a significant troop presence. Think of it as the launch pad for rapid U.S. military deployments. Finally, we have Edwards Air Force Base in California. This base is where cutting-edge Air Force aircraft get put to the test. 
It's basically the playground for aerospace technology, ensuring everything meets the highest performance and safety standards. Oh, and it also houses NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center, making it a hub for collaboration and innovation. These bases are the backbone of the U.S. military's domestic and international operations. They offer a powerful mix of offensive and defensive capabilities, advanced research and development, and elite training facilities. Their strategic locations and roles make them high-priority targets in a large-scale conflict. Command, control, and communication centers form the backbone of the United States military, serving as the nerve centers where crucial decisions are made and operations are coordinated. These facilities are pivotal to national security, ensuring that the U.S. can effectively respond to threats both at home and abroad. Let's delve into the role and significance of some key C-3 centers that are integral to safeguarding the nation. Located in Arlington, Virginia, the Pentagon is synonymous with American military power and strategy. It serves as the headquarters for the Department of Defense, housing top military officials and strategists who shape policies and oversee military operations globally. The Pentagon's immense size and iconic five-sided structure symbolize its central role in U.S. defense. Within its walls, military leaders analyze intelligence, plan missions, and coordinate responses to various national security challenges. Similarly, nestled deep within the Colorado Mountains, the Cheyenne Mountain Complex is a marvel of military engineering and resilience. This facility functions as a critical command center for the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, tasked with protecting North American airspace from aerospace threats. Built to withstand nuclear blasts, Cheyenne Mountain houses essential communication and surveillance systems. Its ability to seal itself off from the outside world with massive blast doors showcases its role as a secure hub for monitoring and responding to potential airborne threats. In Maryland, Fort Meade is home to the National Security Agency, or NSA, a key player in the realm of cybersecurity and signals intelligence. The NSA's mission includes monitoring and protecting U.S. communication networks from cyber threats, espionage, and disruptions that could compromise national security. With advanced technological capabilities, NSA analysts gather intelligence critical to understanding global threats and informing strategic decisions. Their vigilance in detecting and countering cyber attacks ensures the resilience of U.S. military and governmental operations in an increasingly digital battlefield. While these C-3 centers operate daily to support military activities and safeguard information, their significance amplifies during crises and emergencies, especially in scenarios involving nuclear threats. They serve as resilient communication hubs capable of maintaining connectivity and operational continuity under duress. In the event of a nuclear attack, these centers would play a pivotal role in coordinating emergency responses, disseminating critical information, and ensuring unified command across military and governmental agencies. The strength of these C-3 centers lies not only in their technological sophistication, but also in their strategic design to ensure uninterrupted operations. They are equipped with redundant communication systems, backup power supplies, and stringent security protocols to withstand various forms of disruption, including physical and cyber attacks. This resilience is crucial for maintaining government continuity and effective military command in times of crisis, thereby upholding national defense capabilities and decision-making integrity. As threats evolve and technology advances, the role of C-3 centers continues to expand. They must adapt to new challenges such as cyber warfare, emerging military technologies, and geopolitical shifts. Investments in cutting-edge infrastructure and skilled personnel remain essential to enhancing their effectiveness and resilience. Moreover, public awareness and support are vital in recognizing the critical role these centers play in safeguarding national interests and ensuring global stability. The United States is more than just its military might and command centers. It's a complex network of economic engines and critical infrastructure that sustains daily life and national security. These vital components, while essential for prosperity, also become high-stakes targets in conflict scenarios due to their strategic importance. Let's explore these economic and infrastructural targets in detail to understand their significance and vulnerabilities. Imagine New York City's Wall Street, not just as a skyline of skyscrapers, but as the epicenter of global finance. Here, major financial institutions dictate the flow of capital and influence markets worldwide. A targeted strike could disrupt stock exchanges, banking operations, and the stability of financial markets, triggering economic repercussions far beyond U.S. borders. 
The interconnectedness of global finance means that instability here could potentially impact economies globally, highlighting its critical importance. In California, Silicon Valley stands as a beacon of technological innovation, home to tech giants and startups alike. This region drives advancements in computing, software development, and emerging technologies crucial to the global tech industry. Beyond its economic value, Silicon Valley represents a hub of intellectual property and cutting-edge research. An attack targeting this area could not only disrupt critical technologies, but also impede future innovations, affecting sectors ranging from telecommunications to artificial intelligence. The backbone of U.S. infrastructure encompasses diverse sectors, vital for national functionality. Power plants across the country, including hydroelectric facilities like the iconic Hoover Dam, generate essential electricity for homes, businesses, and industrial operations. Disruption here could lead to widespread power outages, impacting everything from daily conveniences to critical services like hospitals and emergency response systems. Ports, such as the Port of Houston, among the busiest globally, facilitate the movement of goods critical to international trade. An attack on these ports could disrupt supply chains, causing shortages of essential goods and commodities, affecting global commerce and economic stability. Transportation hubs like JFK International Airport in New York and LAX in Los Angeles are pivotal nodes in global travel and cargo transportation. Their incapacitation could lead to logistical chaos, hindering the movement of people and goods domestically and internationally. Similarly, railway hubs like Chicago's Union Station are essential for freight transport, linking production centers with consumer markets nationwide. In the digital age, telecommunications infrastructure plays a crucial role, supporting data centers and internet exchange points concentrated in places like Ashburn, Virginia, known as Data Center Alley. These facilities underpin financial transactions, communications, and military operations, making them prime targets for disruption. A cyber attack targeting these hubs could cripple communication networks, compromising both civilian life and national defense capabilities. The interconnected nature of these economic and infrastructural targets exposes them to various risks, ranging from physical attacks to cyber threats. The Colonial Pipeline cyber attack in 2021 highlighted vulnerabilities in critical energy infrastructure, resulting in fuel shortages and economic disruption across the East Coast. Such incidents highlight the need for robust cybersecurity measures and contingency plans to mitigate risks and ensure resilience. Beyond their economic significance, these targets are integral to national security. They represent the neural networks of the country, essential for maintaining societal functions and supporting military operations. A well-executed attack on these nodes could disrupt daily life, weaken national resilience, and challenge the ability to mount coordinated defense responses in times of crisis. Enhancing the resilience of economic and infrastructural targets requires strategic investments in infrastructure modernization cybersecurity, and emergency preparedness. It involves fostering collaboration between government agencies, private sector entities, and local communities to fortify defenses and ensure rapid recovery capabilities. Public awareness and support are crucial in recognizing the critical role these assets play in national security and advocating for proactive measures to safeguard them against evolving threats. As we consider the potential targets of nuclear attacks, it's essential to recognize the profound human impact such actions would have on cities like New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. These urban centers are not merely clusters of buildings and streets. They are vibrant communities where millions of people live, work, and thrive. Targeting these areas would not only be devastating in terms of loss of life, but would also inflict irreparable damage to cultural heritage, community cohesion, and the very fabric of society. Imagine the human toll of a nuclear strike on a major city. Beyond the immediate loss of life, there would be profound psychological and emotional trauma inflicted on survivors and the broader community. Historical landmarks that define the identity of these cities could be obliterated, erasing centuries of cultural heritage and architectural marvels. Families would be torn apart, neighborhoods shattered, and the social bonds that knit these communities together irreparably damaged. The targeting of civilian populations has historical precedent, notably in the devastating atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. These attacks demonstrated the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons, highlighting just how devastating these weapons can be. 
The suffering endured by these cities serves as a stark reminder of the human cost that accompanies such extreme measures. These bombs could have been targeted at military camps, but no, in war, they don't care if civilians die, as long as they are not their own civilians. Cities like New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles are not only cultural centers, but also vital cogs in the global economic machinery. They host major financial markets, international trade hubs, and dense populations that contribute significantly to the interconnected global economy. An attack on these cities would reverberate far beyond their borders, disrupting global supply chains, destabilizing financial markets, and causing economic turmoil on a scale unprecedented in modern history. The interconnectedness of global finance means that disruptions in major financial districts could trigger cascading effects across industries and continents. Stock markets could plummet, businesses could collapse, and unemployment rates could skyrocket, leading to widespread socioeconomic upheaval. The shockwaves from such an event would undermine confidence in the stability of global markets and could potentially plunge the world into a severe economic downturn. Moreover, major cities serve as command centers for essential infrastructure networks that sustain national functionality. These include power grids, water supplies, transportation systems, and communication networks that crisscross vast geographic regions. A nuclear attack would not only devastate the urban landscape, but also cripple these critical systems, leaving large areas without electricity, clean water, or reliable communication. The disruption of power grids could lead to prolonged blackouts, compromising healthcare facilities, emergency services, and the ability to maintain public order. Water supplies could be contaminated, exacerbating humanitarian crises, and posing long-term health risks to survivors. Communication systems would falter, impeding rescue efforts, coordination of relief operations, and dissemination of crucial information to affected populations. The aftermath of a nuclear attack extends far beyond the initial devastation. Nuclear weapons unleash a lethal combination of fire, radiation, and shockwaves that can contaminate air, water, and soil for decades or even centuries. The environmental impact would be catastrophic, affecting not only the immediate area, but potentially spreading pollutants across entire regions. Radiation sickness, cancer rates, and genetic mutations could afflict survivors and future generations, perpetuating the humanitarian crisis long after the initial detonation. This isn't fear-mongering, but a stark reality check. Understanding the human cost of a nuclear attack is crucial. By acknowledging the risks, we can advocate for diplomacy arms control, and a path towards a more peaceful world. My grandfather, who I mentioned earlier, used to say, the only way to win a nuclear war is to avoid one altogether. He believed in dialogue, in finding common ground and working towards a future free from nuclear threats. The devastating aftermath of a nuclear strike extends far beyond the initial blast, causing profound and long-lasting effects on communities, economies, and the environment. To truly comprehend the implications, let's delve into the scenario post-strike, focusing on cities like Philadelphia and Miami, where simulations reveal the harrowing consequences. Imagine the scene, a blinding flash, a deafening roar, and within moments, widespread devastation. Buildings collapse, infrastructure crumbles, and lives are tragically lost in the blink of an eye. Hundreds of thousands could perish instantly, with countless more injured and traumatized. This immediate destruction is just the beginning. Beyond the visible destruction lies an invisible, insidious threat. Radioactive fallout. Carried by wind currents, these deadly particles extend far beyond the blast zone, affecting regions not directly hit by the bomb. This fallout poses a severe long-term risk to human health and the environment. Exposure to radioactive fallout can lead to cancers, genetic mutations, and a host of other serious health problems that can span generations. It contaminates water sources, agricultural lands, and ecosystems, perpetuating a cycle of environmental damage that could take decades, if not longer, to recover from. The economic toll of a nuclear strike is staggering. It's not merely about rebuilding shattered buildings and infrastructure, but also about the widespread economic disruption that ensues. Businesses grind to a halt, trade and commerce plummet, and the national economy suffers a severe blow. The ripple effects are felt in lost productivity, disrupted supply chains, and a prolonged period of economic instability. Amidst the physical and economic devastation, the psychological impact is equally profound. Survivors face unimaginable trauma, and the entire nation reels from a collective psychological blow. 
National morale plunges, and the mental health of millions is deeply affected. Fear, anxiety, and grief permeate communities as they struggle to come to terms with the scale of the disaster. Despite the grim realities, there is hope and preparation. Strong community preparedness and effective emergency response strategies can significantly mitigate the impact of nuclear incidents. This highlights the critical importance of robust emergency management systems and widespread public awareness about nuclear risks. Governments play a crucial role in preparing for nuclear threats. Initiatives like the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, or IPAWS, ensure that critical alerts reach everyone promptly during emergencies. Local and national authorities conduct regular drills and update emergency response plans to ensure readiness. On an individual level, preparedness begins with understanding the basics of nuclear fallout and having a well-thought-out emergency plan. Stockpiling essentials such as non-perishable food, water, and first aid supplies is essential. Potassium iodide tablets can be life-saving, as they block the uptake of radioactive iodine and reduce the risk of thyroid cancer. Knowing evacuation routes and having a battery-powered radio can also be critical in times of crisis. Community preparedness is equally vital, participating in local safety drills, staying informed about nuclear emergency plans, and fostering community resilience can make a significant difference in how well a community copes with and recovers from a nuclear incident. Preparedness is not just about having supplies, it's about having a cohesive plan and knowing how to execute it effectively. Education and advocacy are key in fostering national resilience against nuclear threats. By understanding the risks and taking proactive steps to prepare, individuals and communities can strengthen their ability to withstand and recover from disasters. These efforts should not instill fear, but rather promote dialogue and action towards peace and preventive measures. Together, we can envision a future where these discussions serve as a testament to our preparedness and resilience, rather than a grim reminder of unpreparedness. Let's educate ourselves, engage in constructive discourse, and advocate for policies that promote a world free from the specter of nuclear devastation. If God forbid something like this does happen, and there is a nuclear war, what would you do, and how would you survive? Click the video on screen now to learn how to survive the first 100 days after any collapse.